We can't talk anti-aging skincare without talking about the gold standard ingredient, which is retinol or retinoids. The reason everybody loves retinoids is that they do everything. They increase collagen production, they decrease acne, um, they decrease hyperpigmentation, um, and they are one of the few things that are really well studied and scientifically proven to do all of these things. So the best known option is called retinol, um, and that's available over the counter in percentages up to 1% uh, strength. This is a great option, especially for somebody who is sort of, you know, starting out. Um, it's affordable, you don't need a prescription, that kind of thing. I really like um, some of these options that I'll include here. Um, you will not find me personally using a retinoid product um, that I don't know the strength of. And that is because I just, I wanna know what I'm getting. I wanna know what I'm putting on my face, what it's equivalent to, how likely it is to be effective. Um, so I like the Ordinaries products. They have um, retinols in strength of 0.2%, 0.5%, and 1%. Um, so you can step that up bit, you know, little by little as your skin acclimates. Um, I also think that uh, Neutrogena's 0.5% product is really good. Um, Neutrogena has done a lot of um, tests and studies of their products, so I think that's, you know, a good one. Um, and I also like the Inky List Retinol at 1%. So the, the Inky List also has a retinol serum that doesn't have a percentage listed. I've done some calculations to kind of try to figure out what I think the equivalent is. Um, but this one I know to be one. Nobody who's starting out with retinols should try anything near 1%. Um, but if you were experienced or you know built, had built up a tolerance, I think that could be a great option. At this point, I'm using tretinoin 0.05% strength. Um, so this is available by prescription only. Uh, I have a dermatologist who I see for general sort of skin uh, checks and that sort of thing. Uh, and they have prescribed it for me without a problem. It's not covered by my insurance because it's considered, um, you know, for more cosmetic than um, medical reasons. But I get this whole tube for about $35, even without insurance. Um, and given the strength of it, it is more affordable than choosing like really strong over-the-counter options for me. Here's the secret. I also got a prescription for 0.1%, which is twice as strong as this for the same price. So when I finish up this tube, I'm gonna be starting this one and actually just diluting it 50% with, um, uh, with my face lotion and getting the same strength for basically half um, so you can do that with an over-the-counter retinol as well. Generally, dermatologists themselves are using prescription retinoids because that is the most proven. It's generally stronger than what's available over the counter. Um, but does that mean that you're out of luck if you don't have a dermatologist or you can't afford to go? I don't think so. Um, there is a study that showed that um, over-the-counter retinol at 1% strength was equivalent to prescription tretinoin at 0.1%. So like 10 times stronger retinol gave the same results as the prescription. Um, so if you had a half a percent, that would be roughly equivalent to what I'm using um, as the prescription. What about all of these um, online prescription subscriptions that you can um, get? where you can do a video consultation with a dermatologist and they will send you a monthly supply, um, often of like a compounded product that they've mixed for your skin concerns. Um, I'm sure that they can be great. I don't personally do it because it's a lot more expensive than just getting my um, tube of tretinoin every month. And personally, I don't want to put every single product all over my face and neck. So I put my tretinoin everywhere. Um, but if I'm doing something for hyperpigmentation or discoloration, I'm only going to put that in the areas where I have that concern. So I don't necessarily want everything all mixed together in the one bottle. Um, but if you like that and you know you can afford that, then by all means, how do you avoid your face looking like this from irritation when you start um, a retinoid? Um, so the best recommendations are, you know, low percentages, start slow, try it once a week, twice a week, you know, build up tolerance. It has taken me about a year and a half to get up to this strength with just a 
small pea sized amount on my face um, every night. Uh, so I've, I've built that up gradually. I started at uh, 0.025, so half the strength here. Um, and I, I've built up to the tolerance that I now have. Um, so you should absolutely do the same. But there are a few other tips that can be helpful. Um, so one is if you start to have irritation, um, you can think about doing a retinol sandwich or a retinoid sandwich where you put a little moisturizer on, then you put your retinol or retinoid, um, and then a little bit more moisturizer. So that gives a bit of a buffer for your skin. You can also dilute it, you know, mix it with a bit of moisturizer. Um, and of course, if your skin starts to feel really irritated, um, just take a little break, give your skin a few days to recover. You do not want your skin to be irritated all the time. Um, that can cause inflammation, which itself can actually cause faster um, aging signs. You also want to be really careful what you combine a retinoid with. So um, I would not recommend using it at the same time as any sort of exfoliating acid, like an AHA or BHA. Personally, I only use exfoliating acids once a week, once every two weeks. Um, and I do that on a night where I'm not doing my retinol. Uh, you also don't want to um, be introducing new products while you're introducing a retinoid for a couple of reasons. One, you wanna isolate your variables so that you know what's causing the irritation. Are you not tolerating the retinoid or is it the other product? So oftentimes um, new products that you're starting have their own actives, which have a certain amount of irritation that you know you may experience with them as well. Um, so personally, I didn't do exfoliating acids and I didn't do vitamin C when I was first starting out my, um, my tretinoin. Now to this day, I sometimes get a little bit of slightly flaky skin um, when I've been using maybe a little bit more, a slightly larger pea-sized amount um, of my tretinoin than normal. Um, and I personally do a very gentle physical exfoliation that most people tell you not to physically exfoliate. But what I find is that um, in the shower when my face is clean, when after I've done my double cleanse and there's nothing on my skin, I can very gently just sort of massage my wet skin. And the amount of friction just from my, my clean fingers will just um, sort of peel off a little bit of that skin that's really ready to flake um, and I come out pretty baby smooth. Um, I usually know that I need to take a day off of exfoliation at that point just to let my skin, uh, you know, just back off a bit. Uh, but that's what I do and I feel like um, in the last year and a half, I'll try to show you some before and after photos, but um, I have reduced some hyperpigmentation. I have reduced my forehead wrinkles and my crow's feet. Um, so I can certainly see, you know, the positive effects. And most people can find some sort of retinoid that they can tolerate. Um, and if you can, I would recommend it, you know, whatever works for your skin, um, that you try to find a way to fit that into your nighttime routine. Hope it helps.